Hello guys, welcome back to another video, and today is going to be part 2 of the September Road to Rank 1. And as you can see, um, I'm already top 10. So last night, I had some time, I decided I was just going to play some Jaguar, and I went, I mean, I, at my peak I think I was like 45 and 2, um, then that, no, I think I'm 43 and 2, and then that turned into like 45 and 5. Um, I lost like th three games in a row basically right at the end there. Um, but yeah, this is my peaky low of the season. Uh, I, I did climb back up 28-15, and that is just 17 points off of top six. However, um, it is quite interesting right now. If you look, there is basically an 80-point jump between um, sixth and fifth, and then fifth, fourth, the third, second, first, they're all much closer together. So right now, um, the top five is very far away from sixth. And obviously, um, road to rank one. I might not get rank one, but I want to be safe in my top six position. So the end goal is going to be 2950, 2960, 2970. Somewhere in that region should be enough to get us safe. But at the moment, we are 2815, and hopefully by the end of this video, we will be in the top six. So, without further ado, let's get straight into the games. What a performance there by J King. J King, full plot armor. J King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J King is our world champion. J King Seven. What? The back-to-back -back cards world champion. All right. So our first opponent is Tweepipit on Japan, and this is going to be an interesting question as to what Tree Pipit is playing. Because if it was any other recognizable name, you would just say Jagro in, in a heartbeat. However, Tree Pipit is not any ordinary player. Tree Pipit loves playing these wild, wild decks. Um, and I know in particular on Japan, he really likes playing the... Uh, the one three artillery that pins air units. Um, so if there's anybody who is going to be not playing Jagro, it's gonna be Tree Pipit. I we might be into a very in for a very weird game here. Or you know it could just be standard Jagro and he's trying to climb. It is. Yep. Turn one. I already have no idea what's going on. Okay, so it's probably his um, Japan-US. Tree Pivot also really loves Japan-US aggro. I'm remembering that now. Um, I haven't seen him run it with Naval Task Force before, but I'm pretty confident that he's not going to be running Tora Tauras. Although, uh, maybe he's teched in Tora Tauras for um, this... Uh, patch. I mean, surely, surely he's not. I'm not going to go all in with the Type 94 just in case he does run Taurus. Like, I think it's a very small chance, and he kept a decent number of cards, so like, I think we're going to find out right now if he does run Taurus. Okay, so he, he definitely does not run Taurus Taurus. Um, Still should be a little concerned about Shenano. Let's play this over here. This goes face, this goes face, and then... Do I want to play Type 94? I think we're going to play it. I mean, that's the weird thing about playing, like, one health units into Shenano, is it's like, you're finding one extra ping, but you have one extra unit on board to absorb pings, so it, it, it kind of equals out, and the fact that I have the single regiment on board, it's, like, it's sacrificing another unit into the Shenano, but I'm still getting, like, the one damage out of it, um, and I'm forcing him to have and to play Shenano, which is a consideration. That's a good draw for him, and that's a good draw for me. Um, that probably means his best play is just 
hit Akita into probably Yokosuka. Oh, that's unlucky. That's just unlucky, dude. Um. Yeah, we're just gonna play the Dina. And. Yeah, right, we're just gonna get some damage in. Like, he, he's killed Signal, but I think he's. Well. Actually, the honorable death on the 4 health signal. It does. Yeah, I was about to say, it, that is a play that you could consider like you could consider making rather than playing Shinano. Um So he he did have the Shinano, but such is life. Um I think we just do this. Like two three is gonna be difficult to remove with the surprise attack, it means he can't slam down a fighter to block um the Aichi. And we can't deal more than three damage from hand that turn anyways, so. We're still putting him under the same amount of pressure. Okay. Well, we force him to return naval bombardment to hand. He wins the audacity 50-50. Um... I could go for the card draw with 20 second 35T. Um, that does just, it reveals slightly more information from my hand, but the biggest thing is the two health on the 35T makes it far easier to remove. Um, like with like a cavalry regiment. And that's gonna be GG. Oh, didn't have time to uh, hit him with the GGs. But that? Tree Pipit's usually like top 100 somewhere. Um, and yeah, that's a plus 11. Solid points. He should be down here. 30th, 26, 69. Probably just trying to get himself comfortably into the top 38 range, if I had to guess. Um, but GG's, and let's get to the next game. Alright, we have another Japan, and we're going first again. Uh, definitely getting rid of these. Keeping Martyr going first is like... considerable. Um... Like, I, I absolutely don't hate keeping Martyr going first. I do think he kept... Oh, boy. Well, on the one hand, basically all of this is worse than Martyr. Maybe not Bombing Raid. On the other hand, I am glad I mulliganed Martyr, if these were my next three cards. Okay, he floats on one, which is interesting. Um... Could mean a lot of different things. Okay. I mean, when you're offered that trade, you take that trade. I mean, that is simple. Um, well, he passed on one, so there's a low chance of 35T to take out the Type 93. Um, obviously, he could have drawn a one cost in between the last two turns. And there's certainly a lot of them in the deck. That is a weak Shinano. Okay. Unfortunately, my hand is... You know, how my hand currently looks like, so... He's probably going to do, like, a key to expansion or something. Um, yeah, top deck cavalry. I'm hoping he floods the front line. And walks into a bombing raid, rather than plays expansion. Um... Okay, I want to go for the sheet, and it's possible that he can just trade it out. Um, but I mean, if he spends his entire turn, like, triple trading into Sheedon, that's fine. If he removes Sheedon with Sendai, uh, th I think that's perfectly fine as well. Um, oh my goodness. This is bad. Um, there's a very low chance he has, like, the Type 93s to take it out. Oh, please don't have another Type... Oh my... I meant to say Type 94s, but apparently he does have the Type 93s to take it out. Unless he goes face here. Oh, he goes face. 
That is a bold play. Um. Okay. Well, it's kind of hard to do anything other than that this turn. Hopefully you did not also find double type 94, or else this game is just good as over. Okay, that's the fourth expansion. Congrats, dude. You're halfway through your deck by turn six. Okay, second bike is annoying. That's the type 94. Um, so there is no way to draw with 20 seconds this turn. Yeah, I think we just go for removing the damage guys. I could surprise attack that. I think it's fine to get down the 20 second instead. Um, I mean, we basically need a Shinano top deck here. There's possibilities to do something with a Martyr top deck. Bro just doesn't have enough card draw. Um. Okay, well, about to win or lose, well not win or lose, we're about to figure out how hard I lose off of this Akita, and the answer is pretty hard. Okay, well, I'm glad that's gone. Not glad my hand looks the way it does. And there's the Sendai. Yeah, like, Shinano is literally the only out here. There's no card draw available. Martyr wouldn't do anything. Yeah. This is... I mean... Yeah, that, that was just a rough hand, dude. Bombing Raid, Shide, and Sendai going first versus Quadruple Expansion. Do you really not have a way to deal two damage in hand? That is, like, incredibly impressive. Um, yeah, Shinano won't even help me now because there's... I mean, technically, Shinano could keep me alive. Very, very technically. Not like that. <laughs> I killed literally everything that couldn't attack me. Um, yeah, well, that is what happens with Jagro sometimes. Um, <laughs> how, how bad of a loss was that? Minus 21. Yeah, minus 21 to a mirror where you couldn't do anything. That's, that's the Kaid's experience. But let's not let us... Uh, Let's not let that get us down, uh, and let's get straight to the next game. All right, we are once again going first, and once again, it's against Japan. Um, I'm just going to full mulligan here. You need a one drop. Yep. And we once again have Sheedan in our opening hand. At least the other cards are they're much better, but missing a one drop um, in what is presumably a Jagro mirror is kind of just hell on earth. Um, I think I'll actually go for the Yokosuka. It's, it's playing off curve, obviously, but he can't 35T me here, um, so this does potentially slow him down a little bit, and then we do have the Akita um, to respond. 
I wonder what he's going to trade. Okay, so he does value the Fury on the Bicycle over the uh, one damage guaranteed on the Type 93, or Type 94. I'm pretty sure that's just incorrect, but, uh, you know, you do you. Um... Yep, I keep saying I need to take a key out of this deck, and then I keep forgetting to take a key out of this deck. I mean, as long as Dina doesn't, like, give us two non-blitzers, this should be fine. That's your entire turn. Okay. Oh my. Come on, dude. Really? The Akita goes face and then Dina draws us nothing with Blitz? And the top deck gives us nothing with Blitz? Am I gonna, like, get Blitzkrieged here? It's a good top deck 35T. Joint operation. Okay. Well, we got this going for us. Um, do I just play Devil Aichi? Does not feel great. I mean, it, it does kind of force him to trade, which is a thing. Um, dude, please don't let me lose to the guy playing joint up. Two values fury over damage. Oh, he's going face, and I'm gonna lose. This is it. He tr what? Oh, and okay, this guy's just blowing my mind. Another. That's that's the last type ninety three. Great. Um. I think I would. Hmm. I'm not sure. Um. We can still win this, depending on what's in his hand. That's a good card to draw, the bit of a bizarre order to play it in. It hits the signal. Um. Okay, well this is actually kind of fine. Are you going to surprise attack the bomber? You're not going to surprise attack the bomber. This guy's living life on the edge. Okay, how do I best play around bombing raid? I could leave the Akita up. Is this guy really greeting on the surprise attack that hard? Okay, bike. Keep drawing, like, low impact cards, please. Hopefully he trades with the Akita and then pins the bomber. You've been greeting on naval- There is no way you did not have a better naval supply run turn this game. There is not a chance. Um, so this has to go back here. And then... This has to go here. And then this has to go here. Better than nothing. And then let's block the front line. This guides the surprise attack, because of course he does. And then passes. Okay. Well, this is the two-turn lethal setup. That does require him to not draw a blitz unit. Or lethal. Or disruption. What did he draw? 
Why wouldn't you play 22nd? Ah, oh, the joint op. Um... Okay, he has one turn. Mido doesn't kill me. No blitz tanks kill me. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, if I lost this game, I actually would have just like ended the video right there. There is no way this guy, like, did not throw this game. I refuse to believe that there's not a, uh, a way that guy had to win that game with based on the, just the cards in his hand. Um, plus seven was a lot more than I was expecting to get from that win. <laughs> let's get straight to the next game and hope it is... If it is a Jaguar Mirror, let's hope for a better hand. All right, our next opponent, it is another Japan. And it is again going first. I swear this is not, like, edited together. Um, this is the fourth Japan in a row. And this is the fourth time going first in a row. This is a much better hand. Um, I will say that much. Do I keep expansion? Oh, keeping expansion here is so greedy. I think we keep it. I think we take an amount of risk. Um, so here's what I love doing in the Jaguar Mirror. You couldn't do this before because of, like, sometimes your opponent would pull, pull double beef wagon because you let them take the front line. Um, if this pulls Ginja to kill my bicycle, I'm gonna... Okay. Hmm. Am I fine with him getting that hit? Ooh. It's an interesting series of draws. I think I still just play this because it doesn't have blitz. Like, I don't think there's huge worries about him getting the front line at the moment. Um. Okay, well, maybe that was wrong. Alright, so it's definitely Betty now. Uh, I have actually seen some Japan um, Germans run the, uh, what is this, this is like the 32nd, right? Ah, uh, the, the 34th. There's the Genja. Well, if he slams a raw Betty, we can kill it with 35T. Do I play 35T? Probably. I have two of them. I have Audacity in hand. There's no reason to float credits. Especially because he could just slam a key here. Yeah, that was my one worry, is um, raiding. Okay, so the important thing to remember is his deck does not have healing. Um, but it has larger units than mine, so if the game goes on long enough, he will eventually overwhelm me if he doesn't run out of cards. Uh, and it looks like we are the ones struggling with card draw at the moment. Okay. That is a pretty good top deck. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play either of these cards in hand. With, with my hand being this small, I do need to play for some amount of value. Raw slams Betty, hits the discard. Air sup, draw last. What a talented individual. Um, okay, hopefully we can get a martyr or an expansion going here. That is neither of those two things. Honestly, maybe I should have done Audacity Naval Supply Run. I drop him to 9, I dump all my hand out. These get out of Ginja range. Because um, if he just, like, raw plays Ginja here, it could be in a rough situation. Yeah, I think this was a mistake. That's the second key. 
Um, okay, here we go, here we go. Aichi. Oh, there's the Aichi. And goodbye, Ki. Okay, so that's one of the experimental flights gone, and I'm pretty sure that key was just his straight natural key. But he could still have, like, Sheedon, which would suck. IG special delivery, summons Betty. No more. Um, are you just going face? Um, body? Body? <laughs> body? <laughs> Okay, the guy did not think that one through for a second. Um, <laughs> we will take that win and move on. What What is that going to give us? Plus six. That sounds more right. Um, let's get to the next game, and we're still like, what, 14 points off of uh, top six? So let's go. All right, our next opponent is Soviets. Um, going to keep Raiding Brigade. That's always just a solid choice. I've seen a lot of self-damage around, which makes me want to not keep Signal Regiment. Um, Dina's always good. I might just keep like this. Just cut. Having a one-drop against Soviets is usually less important. It's going to be tokens, isn't it? He's hovering over a card. So, I do not know what's going on here, but... Um, okay, that... I didn't think I pressed end turn, but <laughs> apparently I did. Just getting this guy down a turn lane. <laughs> that was a bizarre. Okay, well, the fact that he's pushed that up and he hasn't played in any engineers, um, just gonna remove it. Uh, the fact that he pushed it up is not a sign that he doesn't have engineers, it's just, it's really annoying for me, for him to have a Bryansk in the front line, so I'm, uh, fine to potentially risk him, uh, um, I don't actually think I go for the key, not because I think he's gonna have some way to answer the key, um, but more so the fact that I don't think I'm going to have a way to get through the guard next turn. So the key's not accomplishing too much on that turn, whereas like if I can play the key here, it's probably going to be better. Yeah, he's just going to farm the people, the IG, but that's fine. That should take up most of his turn. Means he's not playing a... Uh, sure. Um... Yeah, I don't think he's going to have a great response to this. I do overdraw if he keeps um, key on the board, but that's perfectly fine. Overdraw doesn't mean anything. And it also means key will still be on the board. Ah, that's annoying. So it does just die to from the people. Next turn. Um... However, I do still think that damage uh, of this play is worth it. Like, I have a full hand. I have two expansions. I have Dina. Um, I think we're going to be fine. Okay, that was certainly not a card I was expecting to see. That was... I. Should I be pinning these? Let's get those out of hand. I was hoping for a few more blitz units, but... I'll, I wonder if this is... Um, I wonder if he's running the... Um, what are those called? The one cost deal, one di diplomatic attaché. Um, the this could be like a sort of burn deck. I mean, the fact that he's run two imperial decrees certainly suggests it. This is going to be the uh, I saw upgrade for the first time yesterday. 
speak of the devil. <laughs> it's like the second time I've ever seen anyone play upgrade. Um, it's actually really annoying. Yep, there's the Diplomatic Attaché. What's his card draw there? I kind of don't want to send I that, because it's very easy for him to have like much more threatening units. But on the other hand, like I really don't want to just sack a 35T into it. <laughs> and I also really don't want that to attack face. I think we get the Aichi down rather than the 22nd. This gets very hard punished if he has um, 39th rifles. The 5-5 uh, five five that steals the dude. Yeah, Winter Offensive is fine. You're just dead on board. Well, not on board, but you're just dead. Alright. That was a bizarre deck. And we'll take the, that win. <laughs> twenty eight, twenty two. Yeah, that was a plus four. That that's a plus four type of deck. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And now that I'm thinking about it, not that it came up in that game, but just um, I will t finally take out the Zakita. Not because I think it's a bad, but because it's just like not good for my mental well being of playing games. I have not had a time this um season where Akita was like, oh, that's really good. But I've had like five or six times where it's like, oh, Akita just got like the one in six, doesn't hit any units, so now I lose the game. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We'll, we'll test it out. I'm a little skeptical. It does at times feel bad with four expansions. Um, okay, U.S., I don't love these bicycles. Please don't have Greyhound. Devils is fine, not Greyhound. Huh, dude. Maybe he doesn't push. Maybe he, like, attacks and then plays Devils or something. That... What? What could you possibly have in hand? Like, my, my only guess would be the one cost, like, um, draw three cards when the enemy takes the front line. That's, like, the only possible reason to ever make that play. Um, which, of course, he doesn't have. Well, that's not good. I kind of want to play Martyr here. Um, can't be half-tracked, which is a step up from Aichi. Um, and if he goes for the 99th here, which would otherwise put me in an awful situation, he's going to do 99th trade, and then I can 35T into it. Um, which, like, I'm, I'm still getting destroyed on value, but at least it gets rid of the 3-5 devils in the front line. And we, we have second expansion... Um, we have key, which can sometimes be easy to get draws out of. Yeah, that's fine. I could really... I would love a um, Type 93 here. That's not awful. I think I can clear the board. Not as... Yes, I can clear the board. Not as effectively as I would want, but... And I do think clearing the board here is worth it. Um, he's running low on cards. He could, you know, slam a uh, fifth rangers to the front line. Um, but at least I get to respond with a key. And then pray he doesn't have Sherman dive bombing. Oh, okay then. No air defense. This guy's got some... Got a bizarre deck going on here. Have we seen his minor nation? 
I don't think so. Like, it's clearly some kind of mid-range. So, it's still probably Germany, but, like, I don't... You never know who's gonna just, like, slam a California here or something. Yeah, we're getting draw. Also getting the unit out of the front line to avoid getting blown out by, uh... Stars. Or Strat. I love this type of situation because he literally can't play stars or strat or he dies instantly. Like, he can half track, but there's two of them. Yeah, that's fine. I just have to, like, make sure I can't get, like, clowned on by a... Um... Blitzkrieg. That <laughs> that feels good. One of one of the better feelings you can get out of Radiant Brigade, especially in this matchup. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing against frontline is you don't. It's also the same as playing on frontline. You don't need to rush down your opponent as quickly as possible. Although sometimes against frontline that works too. But um, you know if. If you can stop them from drawing, like if you can guarantee that they will not be able to draw it, Frontline will just eventually run out of cards. Alright, we're now in final boss mode for making it into the top uh, 6. And we just hit 39, which means just 11 levels to go, and then we're done Japan. Um, I actually just passed my Soviet level um, last night. For the longest time, Japan was my lowest level. Like last month, like 6 weeks ago, Japan was my lowest level nation at like 250, 260. Um, but that's what 339 is what <laughs> Jaguar meta will do to you. So let's get to the next game. All right, we have another Soviets and another Soviets going second. And let's just keep the good guarantee to draw. And. I think I'm going to start with the bike, actually. Because if it dies to Sickle, bike is the least valuable of the three of them. Um, and I don't think there's a world... Like, even if he passes, I don't think there's a world where I'm... Like, if I play Yokosuka, where I play both of them. That just seems like a good way to lose the game. Um, I kind of want to play Aichi. Like, he doesn't have a punish for it anytime soon. Although, like, what does he play on turn three? Yeah, let's just go for the expansion. Um, having more options in hand is generally better. Also, don't want to get, like, 52k or something. I've been seeing so many Road to Berlin's, and I've seen it trigger, like, maybe once. Um, yeah, it's possible he'll winter warfare me here. Um, confusion. Well, it's not confusion on Aichi, so that's fine. Uh, and I love this situation because he can steal the Aichi with uh, 39th, but if he does, he takes 6 to the face. I get a card draw. Oh my... Okay? Is it entrapment? Is it decisive defense? Is it the voluntarily taking 8 to the face? What? You had a 6 card hand! What is possibly in your hand where you have to float on s five with six cards? Um, I think we just try to put the damage on. This sets up uh, lethal th through guard. I mean, we still haven't seen an ally. 
find it difficult to imagine. Um, also, the Warble Wind stops the like Confusion or 39th from taking Aichi. Okay, so it's US, but... Okay. So presumably that was um, Printer, I'm gonna guess, based on the fact that he didn't play like units. But um, that that's a plus four. That that's fair. Um, why are the Soviets always plus fours? But with that, we have hit top six. Um, now obviously there's quite a bit more to go. Um, there's not not any more um close milestones to try to reach because uh it's gonna be quite the hike up to fifth. Um, but expect at least one more video. Um, probably like two or maybe even three. Um, for Road to Bank 1 for this season, but that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Join my Discord if you want to join the conversation. Subscribe if you want to see how this is going to end, and I will catch you in the next one.